Hello, good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, thank you for the warm welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful start to your day. I'm so happy you can make it here today despite the chilly and cold weather. It's nice and toasty and warm today for you, so we're going to have a great service. I'm so happy you're here. So let's be in a moment of silence as we share our opening prayer. Lord, open our hearts to the surprising ways in which you offer to us your love and your presence. Help us to truly believe in the wondrous ways that you work in our lives. Give us hearts and spirits for service to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Please stand as you are able and sing together our opening hymn as Karen leads us. Please join me in Charles Wesley's beautiful, beautiful Methodist hymn. I'm too busy. I have a lot of things to do. Just Christmas is done. And then here's Valentine's is coming. Good morning, kids. Okay. Let's say, I usually say hep, hep, hooray, right? But this time we're going to say, um, uh, amen. When I say, when I raise my hands like this, you have to say amen. So this is just like praising the Lord, say, Amen. Okay, again? Amen. And when I do this, hi, yeah, hey. Or you can just say, yeah, hey. Okay, now, listen to this. Let's practice. There you go. Now we're away. So we have four kids here. Although we're still busy. Okay, I just want to ask you, like, what happened during Christmas and New Year? Did you get a lot of gifts? Yes? Oh, happy birthday. Okay. Now, usually, if it is somebody's birthday, we are so busy. And... Uh, me, 
me, I always have this special thing that if it is something, there's a celebration, I have to give something something. Something something. Okay, but then we are so busy preparing things. Busy to do this, busy to do that. Okay, uh, okay, I'll give this to first. I'll ask, I have some props here. I'll be needing some help of my friends here. Okay, this, can you hold this, Pastor? And then, whew, see, I told you how busy I am. Uh, can you hold this, Janelle? And can you hold this too? Thank you. Okay, now, may I request the three of you to stand up here? Now, when we are preparing gifts, we want it something special. What kind of gifts do you usually want? I mean, like, if I will be given a gift, of course I want something special, right? But if we are busy, we don't have time to, to get our gifts or to buy gifts to somebody who are special. If it is your birthday, what gift do you want? Uh, I don't know. Well, it's very hard to find that thing in the store. Usually if I go to the store, do you have something that I don't know? Because my daughter usually say that too. What do you want on your birthday? What do you want? I don't know. But it's hard to find a store saying I don't know. <laughs> okay, what do you want as a gift? Uh, well, very hard to think about that. This is Q&A question. Okay, what kind of gift do you want? Um, I don't know. You don't know? What about you? I don't know. Oh my gosh. See, it's very hard. Now, I have three bags here. I'm sorry, I'm using two mics. I have three bags here plus the bag that I have here. Somebody gave this to me, and I love the gift that I have here. Oh yeah, I know, because I'll be using another one. Okay, now we have to arrange this gift. Because this gift is special. Okay, now let's see this one again. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now let's see what do we have here. Okay, Pastor, can you get can you get what's inside of that? Get what's inside. What gets what's inside? Okay. Now I think Karen have to move this way. You go in. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 a puzzle. Yes, it's a puzzle. Now, tell me what we have here. So then you have to tell what's in the, what letters are in here. What letters do you have, Karen? J-E-S. U-S-C. H-R-I-S-T. Oh. Where is the happiest place in this? Where is the happiest place? <laughs> yes, Milan, that's what they said. Happiest place is Disneyland, but did you know that Santa Ana is also a happiest place to stay and to come? Although we're experiencing floods, but I'm happy that you're still here. So the happiest place on earth is in Santa Ana. Okay, and we have a leader. And our leader is J-E-S-U-S-C-H-R-I-S-T. What is that? What, what is that word? Very good. Now let's see. I did this one. Who's the leader of the band made for you and me? J-E-S. U-S-C. H-R-I-S-T. One more time. Who's the leader of the band who made for you and me? J-E-S. U-S-C. H-R-I-S-T. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who's the leader of the band who made for you and me? J-E-S. U-S-C. -E. H-R-I-S-T. Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. He will love you all the way. Amen. 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 Okay, very all right. good. Thank you very Thank you. much. Yay. <laughs> this is something that we have to remember. Even though we are so busy, even though we're preparing a lot of things, we prepared a lot of things the last time during Christmas, uh, New Year, and this coming Valentine's Day, no matter what, it is very special that it's not just the gift, 
the gift that's really special is the J E S U S C H R I S T means Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, okay. Thank you, kids. And because your birthday, I have something here. See, I know I have something really special. This is has a scent. Okay, you can switch if you like the blue or the purple. There you go. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Luke 10, 38 through 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord, answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Isn't it true that we are worried and upset about many things this, this morning? Yeah, we, we've got the rain, but uh, too much rain can cause problems, even flooding in our fellowship hall and the kitchen and, and the lounge. But I want to thank members of the Agape Choir uh, for responding to the emergency yesterday and coming out in the middle of inclement weather to attend to that. And we probably bring with us other, other things that we are worried about or upsets us. Let us uh, come and bring those uh, to the uh, foot of the cross and ask God to lift those away from us. Let's be in prayer. Gracious God, use this time to speak to all of us Lift from our hearts and our minds those things that worry us or upset us and fill us with your love and your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have yet to watch the new Avatar movie, The Way of the Water. But I've seen the first Avatar movie several times now, and one phrase has stuck with me. Guess what it is? There it is. I see you. I see you is a formal greeting and sign of respect. It embodies how the Navi perceive each other. The Navi is the people uh, that is characterized in that movie. Not only do they refer to the little, literal act of seeing someone, but they truly recognize them in the spiritual sense of the word. The character Neytiri is a kind of warrior princess fighting for the Navi people. Beside her human love interest, an eventual husband, Jake Sully, who gave up his human existence to become a Navi. When an ancient threat resurfaces, both Jake and Neytiri must fight a difficult war against the humans. Women were prominent leaders in the Navi culture. In contrast, women in ancient Judaism 
didn't fare as well. One commentator captured it accurately when he said, quote, women are considered important only to the extent that they impacted the lives of men. Philo of Alexandria, a Jewish philosopher who lived during the time of Christ, once wrote, quote, the minds of women are in some degree weaker than those of men and are not so well able to comprehend a thing which is appreciable only by the intellect. A first century Jewish blessing to be offered each morning by Jewish men began, quote, Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has not made me a woman. These are cringe-worthy estimations of women's abilities and values, don't you think? Luke, praise be to God, mentions women by name more often than any of the other Gospels. The book recounts more stories about women. Women speak more lines in Luke than in, other, than in the other Gospels. Women are involved in Jesus' ministry encouraged to join the men in hearing the word. They are shown dignity and honored and play pivotal roles throughout the gospel. Consider the story of Martha and Mary, which Janie read to us earlier. Martha has invited Jesus into her and her sister's home. And this, of course, involved preparing a meal. Martha is busy in the kitchen preparing a meal for Jesus, his 12 disciples, and however many else came with them. This is not a small group to host in your home. This is no small task. Imagine one of our joint communion Sunday fellowship luncheons where instead of all language fellowships contributing to the lunch, only one or two actually do. It's frustrating, right? You can say amen. <laughs> this is precisely what's happening in this story, Martha became so frustrated over her sister Mary not helping out in the kitchen that she complained quite publicly to Jesus about it. Lord, don't you care that this lousy sister of mine has left me to prepare this entire meal for all of you by myself? Tell her to come help. It was assumed at this time that women's place was in the kitchen. It was men who sat at their rabbi's feet and learned from them. Women did not get invited to be disciples of rabbis. Some of you might remember the movie Yentl, starring uh, Barbara Streisand. What did Yentl do in that movie? She presented herself as a man in order to be a disciple of a rabbi because she was so passionate about learning. The Jewish Mishnah, the first major written collection of the Jewish oral traditions go so far as to say, quote, let thy house be a meeting house for the sages, 
and sit amid the dust of their feet and drink in their words with thirst. But talk not much with womankind. First century wasn't too kind to women. Are you now beginning to understand the significance of what Mary did? Bringing herself out of the kitchen to sit among the men at the feet of Jesus to listen to him? Nothing short of scandalous. She was acting like an equal with the male disciples. Mary is violating the gender roles and social customs of the day in order to listen to Jesus. Martha was fulfilling the gender role of her time. Acting like a woman was supposed to act in the first century. But she was missing out on the word of life Jesus was offering. Martha stop feeling trapped by the role others put you in. I'm here now, as if Jesus was saying. I'm here now in your home. You were missing what matters most. This story is a continuation of last Sunday's message that Jesus desires to lift up the lowly, including those who have been pushed back into the kitchen by society. The story of Martha and Mary brings home the message that we are to selflessly serve others even strangers. And this is what it means to love your neighbor. But we must also make time to listen, to learn, to fellowship with Jesus, which is what Mary is teaching us. If there is something Martha and Mary teach us, it is the importance of both praying and working. Pray and work. We need to be both Mary and Martha. But I don't want you to miss the bigger picture here. Jesus is breaking down the societal barriers inviting women to join the male disciples as they sit at his feet. There is a message here for all of us when it comes to societal norms, traditions that societies have developed through generations. We need to have the openness of mind to subject these traditions against the message of Jesus. And when the gospel of Jesus does not clearly support such a tradition, it should be clear in our minds who we follow. And you can think in your mind some of the things that you've accepted as gospel truth when it comes to traditions, mindsets about certain members of society, certain genders among the human species. Subject those against the gospel of Jesus and see if you can support it. And if it doesn't, you have to be open enough and obedient enough 
to let go of what you thought was gospel truth. Another story in Luke that lifts up women is Jesus' visit to the Pharisee Simon's house. Pharisees were highly respected for their piety, for their grasp of the law, and for encouraging ordinary people to live holy lives. But the Pharisees were most often frustrated by Jesus. He defined piety differently than they did and interpreted the law in ways that they did not. Jesus nearly always put people first before rules. Did you hear that? I want to repeat that for everybody. Jesus nearly always put people first before rules. While they separated themselves from sinners, like the Essenes, Jesus befriended them. Let's pick up the story in Luke 7, beginning with verse 36. One of the Pharisees invited Jesus to eat with him. After he entered the Pharisee's home, he took his place at the table. Meanwhile, a woman from the city, a sinner, discovered that Jesus was dining in the Pharisee's house. She brought perfumed oil in a vase made of alabaster. I want you to imagine how much courage and determination it must have taken for this sinful woman to barge into the house of a Pharisee of all people. Here is a woman known in town for her sinful life. Was she an addict, an alcoholic, an adulteress, a thief, or a prostitute? Many think she was the latter, but the text is silent on that question. Luke tells us, standing beside, behind him at his feet and crying, she began to wet Jesus' feet with her tears. She wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured the oil on them. Simon the Pharisee, as you can imagine, is shocked at what's happening before his eyes. When the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw what was happening, he said to himself, if this man, referring to Jesus, if this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. He would know that she is a sinner. By way of suggestion, the text is saying and suggesting Jesus should not be allowing this very instance to happen. Friends, have you ever been a Pharisee in this sense of the word? Judgmental? in your thoughts, thinking things you'd never say out loud? What do you see when you look at others or maybe even particular people, maybe even particular people in our Santa Ana UMC community? Do you see their sins? or their humanity and their heart? Do you find yourself judging them 
or having compassion for them? Do you look down on them for the clothes they wear, the words they speak, the sins they've committed, the life or lifestyle they lead, their rough personality? Or do you see them as dearly loved children of God, just like you? Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, speak, he said. Do you see this woman? When I entered your home, you didn't give me water for my feet, but she wet my feet with tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but she hasn't stopped kissing my feet since I came in. You didn't anoint my head with oil, but she has poured perfume on my feet. This is why I tell you that her many sins have been forgiven. So she has shown great love. The one who is forgiven little loves little. And the opposite is true. The one who is forgiven much loves much. Simon the Pharisee saw a sinner. Jesus saw a woman in pain, broken, ashamed. Jesus saw someone who needed grace, not judgment. Jesus saw a dearly loved daughter of God. Clearly, Simon the Pharisee had not seen her. But Jesus did see her. Simon saw what she had done, but Jesus saw who she was to God and who she could be. Perhaps all of us have been guilty of judging each other too often, seeing only what the other has done. But thanks be to God that our Lord Jesus sees each one of us as beloved children of God. Jesus sees you. He sees your pain, your brokenness, your hurts and heartaches and hang-ups. And he sees you who you are meant to be. He sees you as a dearly loved child of God. And he says to you, as he did to the woman who barged into Simon's house, I see you. My question to you is, will you, especially the men, Will you be part of a new world order where women are seen not as objects to be desired or pursued by men, 
but as a human being with dignity and sacred worth to be valued, who can pursue their dreams, and where there is an equality of opportunity. Because I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, Jesus gave value and dignity to women. And Jesus shows us the way in Luke's Gospel. If you hadn't read the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, recently, I'd invite you to. Jesus shows us the way to lift women folk as God would have us lift them up. Let's follow Jesus' lead. Amen. Please remain seated as we sing, Take My Life and Let It Be. It's time for the sharing of our joys and concerns on this Sunday morning. So if you've got a joy or a concern to share, I'll lift your hand so that we can, we can uh, acknowledge you and I can, yes, oh yes, yes, I'll let you share your joy, Joel. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, thank you everyone for all your prayers. As you can see, I'm well now. I was uh, visited by uh, Miss COVID a few days back. For some reason, I'm not like some of you guys that is still only uh, stay with you guys for you know three, four, five days and it's gone. Well, she, Miss COVID, must love me. She stayed with me for more than ten days. That even my wife, she got jealous because you know if you got COVID, everything is off limits. No hugging, no, you know. But 
everything is well now. And thank you again from Pastor, for everybody, for your prayers. Thank you. Praise God, Joel. We're glad that you're here. Any other joy or concern? Uh, you, many of you are w probably wondering where, where Richard is. Richard was on, in the ER yesterday and uh, texted me late last night that he could not be here today. Understandably so. So uh, I thank Karen and Alpha for uh, stepping in at the last minute. Thank you. Other joys or concerns? Ah, uh, yes, Cheska, the, the Corona family is not here. Cheska was urgent care, right? She was in urgent care. Looks like it was a uh, kind of a bacterial infection that manifested itself in terms of a painful stomach. So Cheska, pray for Cheska as we celebrate Joel being back here with us. Any other? Ah, we've got some birthday celebrants. Yes, uh, Teresa Delarama. Teresa, where are you? Teresa, stand up, stand up. Happy birthday, Teresa. Good, good. And, and uh, also Margie Cabida is celebrating her birthday on the 18th. Margie, I know you're here. Margie, all right. And then Pastor Greg and Janet Poland are celebrating their wedding anniversary on the 12th. All right, so um, other birthday celebrants, uh, Floyd Harris on the 15th, uh, and Jerry Conda on the 19th. Belated birthday greetings to Kuya Joe Domingo, uh, who celebrated his birthday on the 8th. Also celebrating a, a wedding anniversary is Alvin and Mylene Cabida on the 18th. Quite a bit of uh, people celebrating milestone events in their lives. All right, if there are no other choice or concerns, let's enter into a time of, of prayer. Lord of light and joy, we continue to look at the miraculous ways you work in our lives as mere stories or happenstance, how foolish we are. From the beginning of all that is, you have poured your love and light into this world and into our lives. You have offered us countless blessings and opportunities for service, some of which we have followed and others that we have ignored. You have forgiven and healed our spirits. We continue to bring before you the names and situations of people that are in need including Cheska and Richard. Lord, in your mercy. We ask for your healing mercies for both of them and for those carrying burdens in their hearts and in their minds so that they are anxious and stressed out. We lift them to you as we utter their names in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, turn our moaning and crying into songs of praise and hope. Dear Lord, we continue to lift up the Ukrainian conflict that is affecting the entire world, supply chains that are creating hardship for people. Lord, in your mercy, give us spirits of trust and rejoicing that we may truly be your people 
all of our days. Give us loving and forgiving hearts as we interact with each other. Lord, in your mercy, prepare us for joyful service in your world. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Luke 6, 38. The first law of thermodynamics states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. There is a similar moral principle in the Bible about good and evil. What you put out into God's creation will bring a return for good or evil. What you add to the well-being of life on earth, you receive back in fulfillment. What you take and scratch and steal will be taken, scratched, and stolen back. God desires to multiply that good through us now while we're on earth. That's why he created the church. So, I'd like to ask of you today to give because that's why God created you, to enjoy him and to bring that joy to others.
Thank you, choir. Let us uh, turn to some announcements. Let's see our first slide. Yes, we have, uh, uh, we have some flower donors who are responsible for these beautiful arrangements that adorn the altar. And of course, we want to thank uh, Kai Jesse and Lily for picking up the flowers every single week from downtown LA. That's quite a drive, folks. So I hope you say thank you to Lily and Kai Jesse. But the donors, uh, our flower donors today, are Teresa, Margie, Pastor Greg, and Janet uh, for the milestone events in their lives. We thank you for these flowers. And we did go through these uh, birthday celebrants. Next slide. And these uh, this anniversary. All right, next one. Um, friends, uh, your Philippine mission team uh, is just a few weeks away from making the trip to the Philippines. And your donations have been wonderful. Um, the uh, church in uh, Balingog, Nueva Ecija province is close to being completed and uh, should be completed by the time we visit uh, February 10 to 12. We do have additional needs we want to make you aware of and invite you to consider making a donation so we can make it happen. Uh, we have also included a um, uh, pencil and paper giveaway as part of the schedule of Saturday. So we are looking for pencils and ruled paper pads. But if you would rather make a donation, a cash donation or by check, we would gladly take your donations. If you're writing a check, um, make them payable to SAUMC and, and the memo line clearly uh, state Philippine mission and that will that will be uh, turned over to the Filipino caucus treasurer Lily Rojas so we can purchase uh, pencils and ruled paper there is also one other project uh, the sanitation project which involves the construction of a self-contained toilet uh, for 10 families who don't have one in that small rural community. If you want to uh, donate towards that, uh, you can use the same um, avenue to make your donation, make it payable to the church, and just put a Philippine mission and then in parentheses, sanitation project, or if you want it to go to pencils and paper, just in parentheses, pencils and paper. So thank you very much for your support uh, for this project. Our new bishop will be formally installed on the 29th of this month, beginning at 3 p.m. It will be held at First Church in Pasadena. If you are free or if somebody wants to initiate organizing a group of us from Santa Ana UMC to attend uh, this installation service, it would be wonderful for our church to be so represented. So uh, look me up or Alpha or Deborah, and let's talk about uh, bringing a group of us uh, to Pasadena for this installation service. Next slide. Ash Wednesday comes early this year. In fact, it will be on the 22nd, uh, and we will have a service here in church beginning at 7. Uh, Pastor Lynette uh, Fuka Tuitupo will be uh, the preacher for that service. I hope you will mark your calendars. Another important date is the 26th of February. Um, our evangelism ministry team will present God is Love, a night of love songs. Uh, this is meant to be uh, evangelistic in nature. So we want you all to invite co-workers, neighbors, uh, non-church people, and bring them to this event. And let's expose them to the message of 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. February 26, 5 p.m., the event will be held in the fellowship hall. Is that it? Let's bring back Karen to lead us in singing our closing hymn. Please stand as you are able and sing with me, O oh Jesus, I have promised. Church, look around you. Look at, the, look at the brothers and sisters who make up this community with you. Turn to them. Acknowledge them that you see them. Maybe even tell them, I see you. I see you. And let's continue treating each other as people of value and worth, as people of dignity. Go forth into this new week and commit to do just that. Amen. You may be seated.